Oh, all right. Good morning. Um, welcome back to the Soft Compound Podcast. The Formula One season is finally over, so we had to uh, hop on. Let you know. Uh, let you know what happened if you didn't see it, or just let you know our thoughts anyway. Got a few notes. A few notes written down. Um, Abu Dhabi, last race of the season, as per usual. Um, and yeah, the race kind of summed up uh, the whole season in all reality. I mean, race wasn't anything too crazy. I mean, Max, you know. Took a convincing win, basically stayed out front. Um, the real battle was between um, Checo and Leclerc for, for uh, second in the Drivers' Championship. We'll get to that, obviously. We had a lot of different drivers leaving the grid um, this year, so things are going to look a lot different next year. Um, we'll get into all that. So, yeah, just wanted to, um, yeah, start off. I guess we can start off with the race. Like I said, not too much happening really in the race specifically i mean a few incidents here or there but let's start off by this cracking the whip early morning podcast i was gonna say it's early this man. guy is it's early like well, cracking whips we Text had, me this morning we had let's we had go time constraints we had time constraints had to get <laughs> it done get we got it done well the thing is i'm watching i come into the office yesterday turn on youtube on the tv and uh I already see everybody else has got their Abu Dhabi Grand oh Prix God. reviews Are out. Are trying and to shit. keep up with WTF one? They're good. They're you guys are good. <laughs> I mean, they. So what we got to start doing is doing it like right after the event type of thing. That's true, and I feel like you know we're not trying to compete with anybody. Their coverage is amazing, and our coverage is more Americanized. And I feel yeah, like we're, different. you know, <laughs> we're newbies at this whole thing, and we give it a little American perspective and. Yeah. A lot of things we still don't understand, and I'm a complete uh, rookie at this whole thing. But it's fun to talk about. It's a fun sport. 100%. Sure. So, yeah, fun year. Um, it was actually a kind of a fun race. I mean, even though Max dominated the whole whole way through and wasn't that much excitement up at the front, really. Yeah. Um, but there was, there was some excitement in the back, and, you know, obviously a lot of storylines going on through the whole race. and For sure. And obviously – Amazing track, you know, I mean, that's one of my favorites to watch. It's just a super cool venue there. I was going to say, you mentioned to me at one point throughout the weekend that you were like, yo, if we go to one that's overseas, it's got to be, it's got to be Abu Dhabi. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it just aesthetically, it looks amazing. And I mean, I can't, you know, uh, there's obviously a lot of other ones that are great too, that look amazing like Monaco or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this one just. You know, Abu Dhabi is everything. Just seems like over the top there. So, oh yeah, no, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's ri- ridiculous looking. I should say. I mean, they have the whatever building it is. I think it's a hotel that goes across the the, the track, and it's this you know crazy architectural design. It's a really cool place to. Uh, I don't know. It just I, we got to go in person. I don't know. It looks like yeah, a mix sure. of Miami and um, I don't know. Bunch well, of with all the yachts parked and what <laughs> yeah, do they call right. it? The yacht something or what, what's it called like oh the marina oh well so this is like the circuit is called um yeah yaz marina, yaz or marina. Ya- oh, okay yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. okay american again it's probably like yaz marina or something like that but um one thing i know you mentioned this is a couple minutes ago now but you were talking about how we're new to f1 and things like that and last race of the year so we can talk about it i just wanted to touch like yeah we, we are really new to this um and I don't know, like, I, like I'm like i such, like, a, I don't know, I wish I knew about it earlier, you know what I mean? Because I definitely yeah. would have been a fan, and the only reason we are new to it is because we just didn't know anything about it. It's not relevant. It, it is relevant in America now, but it wasn't even two years ago. Yeah, even you know? when we started following it, I feel like it's, well, obviously with the Netflix show, it picked up, that's where we started watching it, and it really picked up right. some momentum there. And I don't know, I feel like, you know, like around where we live, you know, we've met a few people that are into F1 and, you know, it's few and far between because most of the people that we talk to and say, Oh, do you watch formula one? Or, you know, the, the common answer is what, is that like NASCAR? Yeah. You know, like like, no, it's completely not like NASCAR. So, (laughs) um, very different. Um, So I'm obviously NASCAR is huge in America and huge sport and has a huge following in America, but you know, we don't, we don't, I don't know me personally. I was never really a, Uh, a race fan of any races to be honest yeah and um watched a little nascar but yeah got into this two years ago and 
it's just interesting all the different aspects to it. I mean, that's just sure. there's just so much to unpack, and it's like with every sport, but this just seems like there's so much going on all the time. Yeah, and you know, if they're just a little bit off, or there something is mechanically off a little bit, I mean, those tenths of a second that they lose are crucial, and that's that's one thing that you know I is is almost hard to comprehend. Right, <laughs> it's hard yeah. to comprehend that you're going to lose. Oh, they're going to lose three tenths of a second because you know there's not enough downforce or whatever and then you know and then they're totally uh, we think somehow they're totally screwed right most right. people think like well that's not that much time but yeah in f1 it's it's a lot of time so. well right it's the it's the precision and all the right. you don't even r- realize until you watch it for like a year how everything that goes into like you know there's just so many moving parts of the whole right. the whole thing not even just the race and whatnot but you know, we can get back to Abu Dhabi. I just wanted to touch on that um, as far as, you know, yeah. I wish we knew about it earlier because. Well, yeah, and that's the good thing about, been. you know, you just subscribe to the F1 cha- F1 TV. Yeah. And now you can go back. And now we can go back, you know, like you were saying yesterday, go back in the off season and watch some of the great races that we didn't even 100%. know about, you know, right. that we never even knew existed. I mean, we've been watching other sports for, well, geez, I've been watching other sports for 40 years now. But, yeah. you know, I mean, go back. And you think of all the history that you missed. Say, you know, it's just an example. If you just started watching football this year, <laughs> right? Can you imagine like how oh, how much you'd have to go back and watch? <laughs> I know. <laughs> to I be know. like, oh, I love this sport, but yeah. there's so much I missed over the last number of years. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, you, you wouldn't even know like what Tom Brady did in New England or anything like that. You know, like, oh, the Bills are really good in the '90s. I just missed it completely. Yeah, you might think the Bills are a complete powerhouse like throughout because the, they're good now, they're good in the 90s, you know what I mean? Yeah. There, there might be some people out there that just jump on the Bills bandwagon and be like, man, this team's amazing, and I am I love football. But, <laughs> yeah, they sucked for the last 25, yeah, right. 30 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny, um, but like you said, you know, we got to go back, watch those old races, just have a better perspective on the sport, you know what I mean? Um, I want to see, see it for myself. See all, see all yeah, the, I want to see the Vettel like, years. I had to wear my you know. Vettel hat today, and I'd love to go back yeah. and see when Vettel was, you know, the most dominant driver in the, in the right. circuit. And 100%. You know, it's nice. To be, it'd be great to go back and watch whatever. When Lewis started racing and, you know, yeah. I mean, that that whole thing. So, Definitely. And, you, you, know. you know, yeah, for sure. Real quick breaking kind of news that just came through on my phone. Not confirmed. Sources, uh, fastest pit stop. Um, but the 2023 Chinese Grand Prix is set to be canceled. People kind of knew um, China has some some sort of zero zero COVID policy, so they're not they're not going to be racing um, in China. But that should be confirmed officially by the F by the FIA or F1 sometime soon. But just wanted to let you guys know. Yeah, you know and China. they they kind of mentioned that in the race uh, on Sunday that yeah you know there's going to be yeah. a certain amount of races, and then they said, well, that depends if China. Yeah, whatever. right. China comes through, whatever. And, you know, people were complaining about them adding Las Vegas or whatever, but maybe they, it was because they knew China wasn't going to be um, on the calendar or whatever. And they did say it w- it's expected to be not re- not to be replaced by another uh, race. So, well, I guess it's being replaced by Vegas, really. Technically, but technically. Yeah. When, when is Vegas again? When is the? Do we know the date? Oh shoot, we definitely do. I just can't think of it off offhand. Oh, I think it's it's relative. Like it's like. Middle of the season or earlier. I Summertime, oh, right? Wait, no, June, I think July? It, no? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. It might be the second last race of the season. Let's see. Let's see. Las sorry Vegas. to me put you on a spot there. No, you're good. I just didn't. Uh, I don't know when it's happening. I thought it was. I didn't think it was. A date. Thing, I don't think I heard the date, actually. November 16th through the 18th. So, yeah. Oh, shit. It's the second last race of the season. Um, nice. So, cool. That'll be sweet. So, is that like the week after Austin or something? Uh, I think it'll technically be two weeks after Austin if they yeah. keep the breaks the same or whatever. There's two weeks between Austin and well, no, I'm sorry. Austin's actually in October, right? The well, usually. Well, I don't know. It might be a week after Brazil then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. So they're gonna go from Brazil to Vegas to Abu Dhabi. All right, makes sense. I was gonna say we can get back to kind of um, Abu Dhabi, the race. Um, as I kind of alluded to, there wasn't too much I had about the race. The race kind of, except for the fact that it kind of 
reflected the season um, a little bit, but we can get into like things kind of leading up to the race. There's a lot of things going on, obviously, around um, the paddock on the weekend. Uh, Do you have anything on the actual racing itself? Max Verstappen closes out a perfect season, 15 wins. Yeah, not much. I mean, on the race, obviously, it was total domination by Max, and yep. um, I thought that, you know, as far as that goes, the that part of the race was a little bit boring. It was, you know, I was, it was, I was obviously interested in seeing Vettel. I mean, he thought he did really well. Um, yeah, I was gonna say we definitely should talk about. Yeah, a little bit. you know, Lewis did well, but his car kind of, you know, crapped out at the end or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. so sad to see him not finish the race. Um, yeah. Because that would have been nice to see him and um, Vettel and Alonso. You know, I'm just saying it's be nice yeah. to see those guys finish. Yeah, together. right. With the, the doing the donuts and whatnot, um, I know a lot of people wanted to see that because they did it. Um, I was mentioning to you, going back to us not being fans for a while or whatever. I don't know exact like I don't know why they were doing donuts. What what the occasion was, but it obviously it was the end of the season. Maybe it was just the end of the season, but. Alonzo, Vettel, and Hamilton were doing the donuts. There's a very famous video yeah. of them doing it. Everybody wanted it, um, but unfortunately, Hamilton and uh, both Hamilton and Alonzo did retire. So, yeah, as you just said. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the race <laughs> itself. I don't know. There wasn't too much I was gonna excitement say, as far as overtaking. I thought Ricardo did really well, also in his last race. Mm-hmm. Um, as you say, we talk about Vettel. He had a good weekend, still showing that. You know, his retirement isn't because of lack of talent or he's falling off or anything like right. that. He's still he's still one of the best drivers in the world, for sure. Um, you know, we saw him, I believe he was right around P6, P8 during the race, but then um, strategy ended up, you know, not, not panning out for him. I believe they, they were doing the two-stop. Or no, they tried to, yeah, no, no, no. They were on the one-stop, everybody else was on the two-stop. Um, so yeah, I don't know. He seemed like really upset. He was maybe, feisty I was during the say, race. Yeah. Maybe he wanted, maybe he really wanted to close his last race out like in the points yeah. or doing something well. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't have cared that much. To, well, okay. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> say that. I can't say that at all, but I, I thought he wouldn't have cared as much. I'll say that. Yeah. He was, you know, he was upset on the radio for sure. Yeah. I mean, he said, I think yeah, at one point he was like, how do we come up with this strategy or whatever? Yeah, you know? or yeah, he was like, yeah, he definitely was saying things like that or like, yeah. how do we get it this wrong or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, how do we get the strategy so wrong, I think was the... I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of what he said. Right. I mean, hey, maybe just it goes to show you that these guys don't, you know, pull any punches ever, you know what I mean, or, or whatever. When they're in the race car, it's not, they're not thinking about anything else, but just... Why didn't I finish yeah. here or there or whatever? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, Seb definitely had a good weekend, and we'll get into him a little more. Um, but, yeah, uh, it was, or we can get into him right now because we're on the topic. Yeah, I mean, well. you got to take that in perspective, too. I mean, these guys, once they get in a race car, I mean, they're racing. So, I mean, obviously, they – I think it's like when you're under a pressure situation, you kind of say whatever you – whatever's on your mind and however it comes out, it comes out. Well, well, that's the thing. You know, I mean, that's, that's the great part about having the driver radio too, is that you get some amazing, you know, right. quotes and feedback from what they're saying. hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's total, it's a total heat of the moment thing too. I mean, like, you know, maybe they, you, like you said, it, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but without seeing exactly what you said, but like, it doesn't come out all of a sudden, like, it doesn't, what they say, it doesn't, like, always translate to exactly what they mean. Or, like, sometimes they're way more straightforward about things or yeah. whatever. But they're also traveling 200 miles an hour in a car and, you know, in a highly dangerous Yeah, situation. I mean, it's so, funny. When I when I used to, well, whatever, when we first started watching, it's like, man, these, you know, it's almost straight out offensive, some of what they say sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, now that we've been watching it, it's, you know, whatever, it's, it's, it is what it is, and I feel like the people, even the people that are listening to them, are just like, you know, okay, whatever. They don't, yeah. they don't take offense to it, and they're just, you know, they obviously have, know that they don't mean half of what they say, probably. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> or like when they need feedback on the tire degradation, and yeah. then they're like, the tires are fucking shit. Like yeah. you know what I mean, or whatever. No it's, talking around the turns. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't talk during braking. Like, you know, they need feedback on the car, so they'd rather get 
immediate and good feedback, no matter yeah. how it's coming, whatever words right. they're using. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, no, that's a good point, though. I remember thinking, like, wow, like, they're not nice <laughs> at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, I would say Formula One drivers are some of the nicer athletes in the in the, in the Seems world. that way, yeah. Yep. Um, for the most part, right now. I mean, they seem to all be friends and whatnot. Um, but getting back to Seb, obviously it was, you know, a legend leaving the sport. This does seem like a sport, though, where people can come back. I mean, Alonzo was retired for a little bit, came back, and is now, you know, tearing up the field. I mean, there's he, he has alluded to there's a possibility of him coming back, but does he? Yeah. I don't know. So I was watching a little bit before the race when uh, you know they walk around and interview people. Yeah. Martin, what's his name? Martin Brundle. Yep. Walks around the track, which is sometimes – super uncomfortable <laughs> i know they because he approaches people like he uh, this i don't know on sunday did you see when he approached that guy with the wacky suit on and he didn't know who he was no and not a, i don't know nope i didn't know who he was either but he was wearing like this it wasn't a suit it was more like this matching pant and pants and whatever outfit yeah these wacky glasses and i guess he was some mumba uh uh some movie star in ba- bali or something oh or yeah whatever and yeah, yeah so yeah martin went up to him and he's like I don't know, you know, hi, how are you? And it's like, I, I, I don't, I don't really know your name or whatever. Can you tell us who you are? <laughs> <laughs> so I it's see. more like super, oh, it's geez. just cringy when he's yeah. just like, doesn't know, especially when he's in America too. And he's approaching all these American celebrities he that he has no idea are. who they are. He thought, that he thought the one guy was, was Mah- Patrick Mahomes. He said it was yeah. like some NBA player yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. I mean, you would think maybe they would give that job over to an American. I mean, let Dana, Dana, gonna, let Dana Patrick do it. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, let, let, let Dana her. Dana Patrick, let her do it, walk around. She knows who everybody say, is, she's probably. Gonna, she's going to know at least a little more. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that gets bad. I, 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 he, he, Martin Brundle went up to some other guy. I think he was like a soccer coach or something or a player, and like he was not nice to him at all. Yeah, like yeah. he was like, yeah. whatever. He's He goes, Martin Brundle from Sky Sports, or whatever. And the guy immediately was like, I've already talked to Sky Sports twice today or something. Yeah. He was like, oh, like, my bad. And then he was like, how is the season going? He's like, don't talk to me about football or something like that. And he walked oh, away. Oh, that's so funny. But it's like, Jesus, man. Like, you're just making yourself look like an asshole. So the I reason I brought that, that up, though, is so I was watching before the race. Um, he was talking to Vettel's dad or, um, before oh, the race. Norbert. Yeah. So, um, and he asked him that question. He says, well, is this it for, for Seb or whatever? And, and, you know, his answer was kind of, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what his plans are or whatever. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, I mean, they could always come back. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe they get a, you know, maybe they get the itch again, take a year off and, you know, maybe they right. find out they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, On a related note though, I saw <clears throat> a thing from Max yesterday. Did you see what he said about retirement? No. Okay. Maybe you, maybe you didn't see that, but I didn't, it was just a, it was just a picture with a quote from him that says, you know, whatever we we've we've accomplished a lot and everything and he alluded to the fact that he's not going to do this forever and there's more important things that he wants to do and family's more important and things like that That's so what max said wow yeah i think they said i think the quote was you know retirement by the age of 31 or something like that that that's what they were really? alluding to yeah yeah wow so. that would be crazy i mean Hey, so who me. knows? There's all rumors that fly around, but I just saw that one thing on Twitter that was kind of surprising. That's uh, that is bit. that is yeah. surprising to hear. I mean, I but I could also see Max being the guy who wants to be dominant for how long, however long he's going to be dominant, and then just say that's it. You know, yeah, I, I can't yeah. see Max doing what Alonzo or Seb did, where they end up going to like an Aston Martin or a midfield team, yep. or you know, and. You're just taking, you know, P12 and P16s, and I can't see Max doing that. So I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe what he's alluding to. But yeah, you know, everyone knows that eventually your time is up, no matter who you are. And, oh, exactly. You know, exactly. But who knows? So we'll yeah. see. Seb retiring, maybe Max retiring in oh, a few right. years. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. I don't think I can see him going to a mid-level midfield team or whatever. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Who I knows? also can't see Red Bull letting him go. 
You know what I mean? Like that's who that's that's their guy right now. They yeah. need a backup plan before they can. <laughs> obviously, he's free to he's, he's free to retire when he wants. Well, and they he I mean he just signed a contract last year, right? Yeah. 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 And I believe it was for good number of years. That was five years. I think it was five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, who knows? Obviously, a lot of drivers leaving the grid. Seb um, being the big one, legend in the sport. Got to go back and watch all of his years of domination because, you know, definitely want to see that for ourselves. Um, anything else on, on the man? I mean, we can talk about the dinner. That So, obviously, I mean, yeah. if you want to talk about the dinner a little bit. I mean, yeah. we, if, if, you're, if you're an F1 fan, if you're on Twitter or any social media at all, you saw the pictures of all the drivers. Um, they had a dinner to, to celebrate Seb. Um, and his career and whatnot. Uh, the story is that Lewis got everyone together, which is nice, and everyone came out, which was nice. You know, I. It's not something. I mean, obviously, it's very different. There's only 20 drivers in the whole on the whole grid, but it's not really something you'd see in other sports. You wouldn't see the yeah. whole, <laughs> the whole league going out to s- celebrate someone or whatever. Obviously, it's a little different situation, but yeah, it was cool. Um, Rumor was that it cost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars or something like that, or one hundred forty. Yeah, but um, I think I figured out seven thousand dollars a person. I mean, yeah. I don't know that receipt that's floating around out there. It's just hard to believe that a Heineken cost fifty five dollars. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, a couple things. It just doesn't make sort of, much sense. No, but <laughs> no, a couple things on I. So I was listening yesterday to something from F one, and they had Alex Albon on. It was right after the race, and. And, he, and they asked him, they were like, did it cost 140 or whatever? Was that the receipt? And he said it didn't cost 140 and, Oh, really? And yeah. he, said, he said also that wasn't the receipt. Um, they went to, he said the name of the restaurant. But one thing I did want to say, he said that, he said there, that we wouldn't have went to that restaurant because a lot of drivers have dietary restrictions. Oh, on, that's right, yeah. Grid. Well, he I said, know Lewis is Lewis, vegan yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, a couple of the drivers are vegan. I think... Um, I was I was curious to see if any drivers had uh, any food allergies yeah, at all. That would yeah. be cool. I have a few food allergies, but... <laughs> um, that I was going to say, I said yeah. that, and I was like, anyone who was listening would be like, what, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They, that was nice. It, like you said, something... Probably other sports don't have the opportunity to do, but you would never see that in another sport either. So it was nice to see all the drivers going out um, to celebrate, you know, Seb leaving leaving the sport. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, like you said, definitely camaraderie there. And, you know, once they get on the track, it's, you know, that kind of all goes away. But that, like yeah. we mentioned last time, it's like that's like that in any sport where guys hang out and then they, you know, whatever. Some guys are, you know, good friends off the field or whatever or, off the ice or, you know, even that is, you know, right. super competitive once it gets, once the real game gets going. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, no, I thought it was cool to see the, see them out to dinner or whatever. And obviously it was um, a great way to celebrate, you know, Vettel and his, yeah, his well, amazing career. A loved driver, you know, throughout the grid, obviously everyone came out to support him and, he does these um, runs around the track. Like, everyone does, like, track walks or whatever. Um, and Seb would like to jog the track. And his last one before the race on Sunday, like, 300-something people came out on the track to do it with him. Oh, really? Um, throughout that's the paddock, awesome. yeah, from Aston Martin, uh, Ferrari, Red Bull, other teams, too. So oh, that's it, cool, it's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Everyone, or the saying um, going around was, like, that Donkey Seb or whatever yeah, I don't know. Um, and then he had a shirt that said like, uh, "Donke F one." Like, yeah, thanks yeah. F one or whatever, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, F one is good at the, um, you know, send offs, these celebratory like emotion, emotional things. Like, I feel like that's what they're good at. You know, they're doing the donuts. I've got to do his burnout donuts, um, which was cool. And yeah, yeah, it was good. Good way to end it off. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's really all I got on on, on Seb, yeah. on him and the dinner and whatever. It was yeah. a great way to end it. And you know, like I said, there's other guys that won't we won't see next year, like Ricardo too. That I thought did really well. And I, yeah. you know, he was saying in an interview after qualifying, I think he was saying, you know, definitely felt like he had a top ten car, yep. and wanted to finish. I think he finished ninth, right? 
I believe so. Yeah, yeah I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. So good finish for him, for sure, after a really crazy kind of tumultuous season at, at McLaren. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, sad to see him leave, too, but he's not retiring or anything like that. It looks like he's going to be the, the third driver at Red Bull next year or so. Who knows what happens with that situation? Um, really, really, obviously, he's one of my favorite people in Formula One. One of the reasons why I fell in love with the sport and everything like that. So definitely glad to see him that going to be at least around, you know what I mean, next year. And then hopefully he comes back in 2024, 2025, whatever it is. Um, yep. Yeah. One thing I did have written down, I heard someone make a good point yesterday. So obviously, Ricardo and McLaren... The car, at least, did not get along. They couldn't get the setup right, whatever it was. I don't know. Obviously, nobody knows exactly what it was. Maybe even they don't. But um, someone made a good point. Oscar Piastri is now going to be replacing Daniel Ricciardo. McLaren, they need to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen with Piastri. You know what I mean? Because in all reality, Ricciardo, <laughs> Ricciardo was, yeah, it wasn't a good fit between the both of them, but it was probably McLaren that wasn't catering well enough to Ricardo. You know what I mean? Or they well, weren't giving him I mean, what, what if, he needed, you know? If you remember when the season started, and I can't believe we're, this is the last race, it just seemed like it flew by, but yeah. when the season started, you know, the first race, McLaren finished last, right, I think? I mean, they were calling him, you know, the it was bad, McLaren, yeah. orange is the new Haas, right? That was the, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, the yeah, meme yeah, going yeah, around. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That was fun. Um, I about that. So, yeah, I mean, they got it together, but it, was, it took a few races to really – yeah, figure it out. I mean, obviously they didn't f really figure it out all year. It seemed like, but no. they just, um, yeah, I don't know. Like when the season started, they were the worst. It seemed like. <laughs> yeah, I remember because like I bought a Dan and Ricardo sweatshirt. Yeah, and I remember thinking, I'm like, did I curse them or something? Yeah. I, I don't know. I remember yeah. thinking, like, I was just so in such shock that they were not they were they were doing that bad, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Hopefully McLaren can make the necessary adjustments that they need to to um, you know cater well to Piastri and not maybe totally favor Lando and his setup and whatnot. I don't know. I don't know what they need to do, but they need to make sure that they put Piastri in a good position to have success. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I and that always comes back to my rookie knowledge. It's like, do they have are the are the setup? Ex, you know, are they exactly the same? Um, Right. Yeah. Or not. You know, I'm I'm sure they're close and they're very close on uh, the car setup and the cars. But you know, does that really come down to is is one driver better than another driver? I'm sure there's some of that. Yeah. But do they? You know, like with Red Bull, do they make sure Max's car is completely? Yeah. Whatever. Is there more effort put into Max's car than Checo's car? I right. don't. I don't know. I don't I'm just know. I mean, who knows. Right. I mean, like you said, we're, I wouldn't we're think new. so, but you wouldn't think, but I think there is some things that can differ between the cars and some things that can't, you know what I mean? And the things that can't are probably the way the things that can't go are probably decided by Lando or Max. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if Checo doesn't like, or Daniel doesn't like something about the car that has to be the same on both cars, that Daniel's probably not going to get exactly what he wants. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, sad to see Ricardo go. I mean, there was kind of a sad radio message <laughs> when he was pulling into like the paddock or whatever. He was kind of like crying or whatever. He was talking to his yeah. team or whatever. I they put some uh, graphic up like on his steering wheel. I think they told him to press some oh, nomination, yeah. and I think it put up some graphic or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then it like whatever. It was just kind of a sad moment. But like I said, hopefully. We see him back driving on the grid, and he'll be around. So, uh, yeah. Anything uh, anything um, on the Honey Badger? No, just obviously, I mean, such a great guy, such a great, um, yeah. obviously, such a great attitude, and always happy, always positive, it seems like, and, you know, great, um, you know, seems like a great role model for everybody. So, yeah, definitely I, miss seeing him around, and, you yeah. know, whatever, definitely miss – I seeing him around. It's like he's in my backyard. <laughs> Miss seeing him on the race circuit for sure. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, like I said earlier, one of the reasons why I initially fell in love with the sport. I mean, I just, obviously one of the bigger 
names on Drive to Survive and things like that. One, I did see a nice post from someone who works at Netflix, basically just saying thank you to him for everything because Netflix was never, never and not always well received, I guess, throughout the paddock from people at Formula One and other things like that. But Ricardo obviously was always one of the guys who liked to play into it and, you know, yeah. give them the content that they were looking for. So, um, yeah, going to be well missed by everybody for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can do a whole episode oh, about Netflix, say. but, you yeah. know, I think that a lot of the drivers just didn't like it. I don't think they liked a lot of the made up controversies and dramas that they, you know, kind of put in those seasons and whatever. Exactly. But, but that's what made it interesting, really, and got people to watch it. And for now sure. is growing the sport a lot. So, for sure. One thing we do should have to touch on, should touch on really quick, is just the, the um, second of the championship between Checo and. Um, Charles, I don't think we touched on it before, right? No. Just, just nope. to, I mean, yeah. obviously we all know what happened. Um, Leclerc takes P2 in the, in the driver's championship. Um, you know, Perez started second, just, you know, didn't, you know, I, I don't know what else to say besides he didn't finish. So he needed to finish, he needed to beat Leclerc today or yesterday or on Sunday, and he didn't. Um, and, yeah, obviously Max giving him – the position in Brazil would have helped him, but it wouldn't have it wouldn't have made the difference. Um, yeah. So and I that's think all comes, I have to say on that. I just yeah, and I think that. it goes back to last week too. I mean, we thought Leclerc was out of the race in Brazil, right? And he ended up finishing what seventh or yeah, exactly sixth. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's a strong finish for being being in a crash and then coming yeah. back. Definitely. And then finishing second this week. So congrats to him. I mean, it was good. Yeah. Good last couple races for him for sure. And, you know, he really obviously shows, you know, when the, when the Ferrari car is on, I mean, he shows that he's one of the best in the world for sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, but, yeah, that's all I had. I just wanted to touch on that as well. Um, on that. Anything yep. good? No, cool. I don't have anything else. Yep. Yeah. So uh, a couple other drivers leaving the grid. Um, Latifi, Nicholas Latifi, and Mick Schumacher. Um, Latifi, I would, you know, whatever I'd say, kind of, you know, might have been a long time coming. I don't know. Um, I believe he's been in Formula One for maybe four years, three years, four years. Um, obviously, was not, you know, the most, you know, didn't have the best car, but wasn't the um, highest caliber driver on the grid. Mick Schumacher, I mean, he didn't get a crazy chance to prove himself. I mean, a couple of years in Formula 1. One thing I did want to touch on with him in Abu Dhabi, he started doing donuts at the end um, and then immediately got yelled at by the <laughs> Haas pit wall. They literally were like, Mick, Mick, seriously, man, stop doing donuts. They were like, Can you please just stop or whatever. Like, they were like, I miss like, that. So I mad. That. Yeah. I part of me doesn't get it because or part of me all of me thinks that Mick should have just said fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you guys are firing me anyway. It's my last race. I'm doing donuts. Like I get it, it's not good for the car or whatever, but like fuck off. I don't know. Whatever. Just seem, let them let them last live. race. Why can other people do it and it's not Yeah, right. Nobody cares. Know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But um Obviously, the grid is going to look a lot different next year. I don't. I loved all the drivers this year, um, or whatever. I, all the drivers are very personable, or most of them, I should say. Um, so yeah, definitely don't like to see these guys go either. Um, even though they're not, you know, big front runner names in the sport. Yeah, yeah, it'll be big well, changes. But I mean, obviously, we can do. Uh, you know, our next podcast will probably be on something yeah. like you know what's to look forward to next year and. Yeah. What changes things and things like. like that. I mean, the off season in F1 was our first one last year, but I mean, there's so much activity going on. It just doesn't seem like there's an off season, even though there, yeah. there's no races, but there's, you know, it seems like in a month they're going to be, we're going to be car testing again and we're going to be, you know, Oh uh, my God, these crazy designs and what happened, what changes are they making and 100%. how are they disguising the cars? So we don't see them. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, right. So, there are some tests going on today. I don't know what it is exactly. It's just some, I don't know. I'll we'll, we'll post about it, but I, I was going to say. I, well, I remember last year after the last race, there was immediate testing the next week going on with, with whatever. Yeah, you new know. driver. Well, yeah. now, like, new drivers can drive with their team, or drivers can drive with their new teams, like, um, right. you know, Alonzo's with Aston and Gasly's with Alpine and things like that. Yeah. So, 
It'll be interesting. Speaking of, sorry. Jeff, I'm, I'm good, yeah. Speaking of changes for next year, um, Logan Sargent, who is Formula 2 driver and now confirmed new F1 driver for Williams next year, um, he earned his super license, so he needed to finish P6 um, in the F2 race in Abu Dhabi, and he did. He was literally racing to get into F1, um, which is pretty insane in all reality. He had everything to lose as far as his shot at F1. Yeah. And, you know, he can he converted, so good for him. It's going to be the first American driver in a very long time. Um, so, yeah, super, super pumped about that as Americans ourselves. Yeah, no, it's great. I thought it was super interesting when you told me this morning that he had to finish <laughs> sixth and or above to get the spot. Yeah, I mean, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super insane. Yeah. Like, like I said, he was just ra- he's literally had everything to lose during the race. Was yeah. His shot at Formula One. Yeah. Um, c- kind of just shows how stupid the super license program is that they have. Like, oh, you have to, like, if he finished P seven, does that really mean he's a lesser driver than if he pin- like fuck like come on? I don't know anything about the super license, but it sounds a, a lot like uh, becoming a golf pro. Be, you know, like getting your you card. Yeah. Like you have to win certain tournaments. You have to finish. You know, certain things. You have to shoot right. certain scores to right. get your card on the tour. You know what I mean? So for sure, I mean, sounds similar to that. So yeah, you know, we'll see. But yeah, there's a whole system. Maybe I'll throw a graphic up. But yeah. yeah, as far as that, I don't got too much else for the uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the end of the season, the end of the Formula One season. If you've been following along, thank you very much throughout the season. I know I saw everybody posting. They're like, oh, thanks for following throughout the season, blah, blah, blah. So I feel like I had to say that too. Uh, <laughs> thanks for following Thanks throughout for the following season. throughout the season. Another thanks for a great season. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. It seemed kind of corny, but wanted to say it as well. So yeah. Yeah, Anyways, absolutely. No, I'm good, so. All right, really appreciate it. Early morning podcast. Now let's get to work. It's 9 o'clock. Let's go. Jeez. All right. Some more coffee now. Yes, sir. All right, really appreciate it. Thanks for a great season. Yeah. (laughs)